Hey, what's going on everyone? A lot of newcomers to the channel lately, so I wanted to make things a little bit easier by kind of giving a very gentle introduction to using and moving around on the shell while you're learning Linux. So you've heard that controlling Linux systems through a command line interface can help you save time, automate things, and make running a command on a thousand servers just as easy as running it once on your laptop. Well, yeah, it's freaking awesome. The problem is, when you're just starting out, it can be confusing to work on the shell. That's where you're doing all this learning, all these commands, how Linux works. Um, there's a bunch of like weirdly named commands to learn. Obviously, it's a super constricted text editing environment, your shell. And it's just very different to use for text manipulation compared to the point and click text editor stuff we're all used to. In this video, you're gonna learn the very basics of moving around in a Linux shell. This isn't about shell commands or which programs to run. It's all about movement, about movement and efficient editing for beginners in the CLI. If you already know some of the basic ones that we're gonna cover, skip ahead, uh, just open up the video description and use the links there. The most important thing I wanna do by the time this video is done is give you a foundation of stuff to practice every day, like bookmark the video if you have to, refer back to it for reference, write these things down and stick them on a tiny little note card in front of you while you're working. I'm trying to build in the right instincts for you uh, so that you have those right from the start when you're learning Linux, so that you don't have to like relearn anything later or you have a bunch of like really inefficient things that you're doing that you're gonna do 10,000 times while you're learning Linux. It's just a huge time saver and I want you to have those the correct Linux killer instincts right from the beginning. So without further ado, uh, let's jump in and get started. As you can see, some commands complete very quickly, like I typed in this command, echo the current shell, and it gives me an answer and then waits for me to type in some more stuff. Well, that's great, but some commands take a bit longer to complete. For example, if I ping Google's DNS server, or one of them, you can see that uh, you know, if I type quit, if I type exit, if I type help, if I type, oh my God, please let me out of here, nothing's gonna work because this thing isn't listening for more input. The way you actually stop a running command, if it's taking a long time, is with the keyboard shortcut Control C. And that will send a sig, uh, it'll terminate the command that's running. Okay, so Control C stops a running command. If you actually want to close the shell, if you wanna actually log out of the shell that you're logged into, that you could do that with Control D. So that will close your current shell session. Now, if you're logging into a remote server, as we sysadmins and developers often do, and that is your login shell, like that's the shell you were given when you typed the SSH command to get over to that remote server, well then, if you hit Control D, that's gonna log you out of that machine. It's gonna close your login shell, and you'll be back to wherever you started, maybe your local laptop or your work desktop. So those are the absolute basics. Let's talk about the first shell navigation trick that you should absolutely learn. Okay, so if we list var log, there is, uh, don't worry about the commands too much now, I'm just kind of thinking about the concepts here. So we're gonna list the files that are at that location. One of the things uh, that's really useful is, for example, if we want to see a bunch of extra information, but we're not sure exactly which file we want, then we can use tab to autocomplete. So what that looks like is, uh, let's say we know there's something something to do with GPU in there, but let's pretend we didn't see this, all of this stuff just now, we didn't list that out. So we know it's GPU something. Whenever you're thinking uh, something, hit tab with your ring finger and you'll you'll see an auto-completion if that is possible. That is, if there's only one possible option from there. Here, we'll just list it out. Okay, lovely, so we see that. If, for example, we wanna see something where there is, uh, let's say we just type in A, right? So there's no, there's no one thing that's gonna complete that successfully. It could be any of these three uh, files and directories here. So if we hit tab once, nothing is gonna happen, but you can actually still get some use out of this tab completion feature. If you hit tab twice, it's gonna start showing you all of the currently matching items. So you can see it's not actually listing out the whole directory, and I'm still in the process of typing this command, but as a convenience, it's now showing me what that could possibly be narrowed down to. So this is a good way of narrowing your choices down when you're looking for something specific. And when I finally say, oh yeah, it's actually auth log that I'm interested in, then I can type the next letter, like a U, and then hit tab, and it'll autocomplete when there's only one more choice. So it's a really nice trick. Uh, you will use that all day long. Uh, clearing your terminal, I'm just gonna show you very quickly. It's not officially part of this video, but just typing clear um, or control L 
will clear your screen. Uh, it's just nice if you want to get a clean slate, as it were. What it actually does is just uh, scrolls you down. So let's talk about movement when you're typing in commands. Uh, I'm going to comment this out because we'll just reuse this. Uh, anything after that hash mark bash won't look at. But again, this isn't a bash course. This is just about navigating in the shell. So up arrow to get that back, my previous command. One of the most common things that we find is that we're typing something and then we are still in the middle of typing and we realize, oh, I've just finished typing in this command, but I actually want to go to the beginning of the line and add something else. So the keyboard shortcut for that is control A. For example, if you want to type sudo before something or what have you, control C to get out of something you're typing. Just like killing a running command, you can just get a clean line in the shell. So control A to go to the beginning, control E to go to the end, A, E. So I'm just holding down control and hitting A, E, A, E. You should be following along with this if you're not. But usually you don't just want to go forwards and backwards to the beginning or the end of the line. You want to move throughout the line to correct a word or do something else like that quickly. The way you do that is by using Alt F and Alt B. F, as you might imagine, goes forward and you'll see something happen here. Um, words are delimited by uh, white space and symbols. Uh, not all symbols, but some of them. So. This might not have perfect, it's not just spaces that count here for a word. So your is not a word, it's you, and then re is another word. Um, but alt b goes backwards, alt f goes forwards, and these quotes are popular in bash for string delimiters, double and single quotes. So uh, this behavior will actually do kind of what you want most of the time. Again, alt b for backwards, one word, alt f for forwards, one word at a time. One of the most useful things you can do is to search your history. Now, actually typing in history is a command that will get you your, your bash history, your shell history. So sure, you could copy and paste from here, but that's not nearly as elegant as what you should be doing, which is, for example, if I want to start some command that involves ping, what I can just do is control R to do a reverse search of my history and then type in the command that I want. I can just start typing in ping or ing, as in this case, and it'll give me the most recent matches. For example, I just pinged news.ycombinator.com, Hacker News, an amazing site that you should be reading uh, if you're at all interested in tech. But if that's not the one I want, I can just hit Control R again, and that'll bring me to the next most recent one, so the one before that, and then again. Oh, typing, right, contains ping. Uh, if you want to get out of this, you can control C. That's what I usually end up doing just because it's like a reflex, but control G actually gets me back to what I was typing. So if I'm searching ping, control G will let me out and preserve what I've typed. So if you've typed a whole bunch before you started a reverse search, control G will bring you back, or you can just control C. So again, repeated use of control R is one of the things you will be doing the most while working in the shell. You've already seen me clear the screen, but if you want to clear uh, that's what I did before. You can also use Control L to clear the screen. So those are the things you're going to be using every single day of your Linux or programming or whatever career. They are the absolute basics. They are the instincts you just have to have in your muscle memory immediately available as you're editing text in a command line environment. I've got a more advanced video as well, uh, which I'll link to here. Um, first, if this has been helpful, definitely give a thumbs up. Subscribe. I've got content, everything from super beginner stuff like this to, you know, fairly advanced system administration and Linux and programming videos. And I'm coming out with more all the time. So just a quick note, these shortcuts are the defaults for bash on most popular distributions. So the chances are that what you see here will just work on the first distribution you're using. These are Emacs shortcuts. Might not be what you're learning first. If you're learning VI or Vim, you can set up your shell config to use Vim shortcuts instead of these Emacs shortcuts for basic text manipulation. That's things like cutting or killing and pasting or yank yanking text commands and the moving words and beginning and end of the line. Those are Emacs shortcuts. Everything else that we did is bash specific. Thanks again for watching guys. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.